opening of this piece, I try to think of the pulse as essentially free. You can use a fair bit of rubato here, but it's important not to compromise the sense of forward motion within a phrase. So where you do use rubato, it tends to be organically related to the development of the phrase um, and doesn't interrupt the line. Uh, so from the beginning, uh, it's important to be aware of these uh, two voices within the 16th line. Um, so instead of playing the second bar like this, where all the semiquavers have equal weight, I try to keep um, my ear uh, tied to the progression of the bass line. And that gives you a sense of forward propulsion that brings you to the D. Uh, later on, particularly with the 32nd notes, uh, you have a real sense of freedom and elan. Fugues are always very tricky to um, build up and to start working on initially because you have these different horizontal lines that are layered and they often don't fit very neatly under the hand. Um, they can be very intricate and you need to be very careful about how you develop fingerings. Um, I tend to do a great deal of slow practice with individual lines and then gradually put them together. I do change my fingering as I go along, but I think it's important to start building the texture line by line so that you have a very clear oral impression of what you're, what you're doing. Um, so I would start uh, with the right hand alone at the opening. Paying particular attention to the long notes, making sure that they sustain. And where you have lower voices coming in, make sure that, you, that these really sound and that you really exploit the harmonic tension between the voices. This second fugue is related very closely to the first. Um, the two subjects are very similar. Uh, in the first fugue we have this. If you start this subject from the fifth note, you end up with the first five notes of this subject in the second fugue. 